Bitcoin core devs have executed a coin toss, which is essentially a cute cryptographic technique to determine the timeline in which Taproot will be activated. Now, Taproot is a large potential upgrade to the Bitcoin blockchain and is going to have you know, a number of different ramifications. But essentially what happened here is rather than going through a normal maybe consensus mechanism, the dev said, hey, OK, let's execute a coin toss. And they looked at a certain Bitcoin block. And if the last hash of that block was a one, they would do block height. And if it was a zero, they would do a median time pass to determine the timeline in which miners would have to activate uh, taproot. So essentially, it went with medium time passed, you know, they tossed the coin. And that is going to determine that taproot, uh, once the quote is shipped, they will have about three months with which to activate it, potentially for 90% of miners to take that up. So Will, I know you've been following our colleague Colin Harper's reporting on this, who's following it really closely. And he wrote this piece. What are your initial thoughts upon reading this one? Then we can talk about maybe Bitcoin upgrades more generally. Will, when you, before you give your initial thoughts, please just <laughs> Explain that again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I will do that. So, okay, Taproot is part of a larger upgrade to the Bitcoin ecosystem, which we can get into a little bit later, but it just improves some of the privacy underlying tech around Bitcoin. It doesn't do a whole lot of privacy stuff like a Zcash coin, but it does in, like, add some tech infrastructure that allows you to do some more privacy-oriented stuff. And there's a whole a bunch of other things that does, uh, which is not important here. What is important here is that the consensus for upgrading Bitcoin is very, very difficult. The last time there was any major update to the Bitcoin blockchain was in 2017. And there was this whole thing called the blockchain war, where we had a bunch of miners and a bunch of corporations on one side versus a bunch of randos who were running their node in their mom's basement. And they're all butting heads over what, what is the future of Bitcoin? Is it going to be big blocks or is it going to be small blocks? Blocks. And that left a pretty nasty legacy in the Bitcoin space. Small blocks won, uh, but it kind of came down to uh, to some infighting. And the legacy of that has been confusion on how to update Bitcoin going forward. And so what we have here with Collins reporting is a another way, another attempt to update Bitcoin with software that everybody wants. Everyone wants Taproot to be updated into Bitcoin, but nobody knows how to get it done uh, with consensus, given that we have this decentralized community that doesn't really have a way to interact with each other outside of Twitter and Mastodon and Reddit. Uh, and so they have been working through these like different ideas. And this coin flip is the latest one uh, where uh, they were saying, hey, we're going to update Bitcoin at this block height, or maybe we could do it at this when this time interval passes. And they just decided to do it when the time interval interval passes in three months from now, which is like really getting down into like the nitty gritty. It doesn't really matter as much. What matters here is they kind of figured out how to update Bitcoin finally after three years of arguing about it. So that's so Will, my I gotta briefly jump in there. <laughs> once Correct once the me. code is shipped, yeah, there'll be a three month window within which miners can adopt it, um, and that will determine whether Taproot, you know, goes into effect or fails. And then everybody's back at the drawing board to you know try and hash this all out again. So that's the window that's being identified here. Um, but yeah, if ninety percent of miners don't activate Taproot, then it fails and it goes back to the drawing board. But as Will said, you know, there is a consensus that or not a consensus, that is the wrong word, but there's a lot of support for this proposal uh, within the community. But Naomi, I'd be curious to get your thoughts on this too. I know you've been reading up a bit. <laughs> sure, I'm, I'm probably not gonna be a huge help, let's be honest. Um, but we're talking <laughs> about uh, Schnorr and Taproot, and basically, as Will, you already explained, Taproot is a more, con more complex construction that basically allows additional smart contract functionality. And its implementation, implementation in BTC is going to include Schnorr. Um, so they uh, they need Schnorr in order to do Taproot. Like I said, it's pretty complicated, but basically, you know, Schnorr will be used to create aggregate signatures. It's like another way of doing two of two multi-sig. So that, you know, you can create transactions that look like a normal signature and you can't tell that it's two of two. So it is like a, an interesting uh, upgrade. You had like BCH, they do a different tactic when it comes to updating on their network they have regular hard forks uh, predetermined. They implemented Schnorr um, a, w a long time ago. Um, but it's uh, it's something that is actually particular to Lightning that's going to help them there. Um, it's going to be useful there and, and basically creates this you know, third way <laughs> 
of, uh, of, of doing transactions. So um, it's, uh, you know, you've got old style transactions were version one, you've got SegWit was version two, and now we've got this will be version three, and it will only really help with privacy if the majority of people start using this version three. So it's, uh, it's an interesting thing, and it is kind of cool they're doing this coin toss thing that I don't quite understand in order to figure out <laughs> how to move things forward. You know, you do what you got to do in the crypto space. It's difficult to, to get things done. And I think maybe pulling it out, you know, this is the hash. We try to reach out to you, our general viewers, and talk to you through some of these issues. This really underpins like just how complex all these consensus mechanisms and cryptocurrencies can get, you know, rather than just talking about Bitcoin as this one gigantic thing. There's a ton of developers that are working around the world trying to push this thing forward in a decentralized way. And that requires a lot of communication, that requires a lot of expertise, and it requires, you know, some conflict sometimes as well. So, you know, while a lot of people might just be tracking like number go up, number go down. There are people working on the dev level every day that are really trying to push this actual mission forward. So, you know, that's the top level note, but this is how nitty gritty it can get uh, when you're diving deep into the tech like we do here at Coindesk. Ben, on, on that note, I don't know if you'll have an answer <laughs> to this, but if we're just talking to our everyday audience, what, how, and how does this affect them if it does at all? Um, so it's going to improve like the end user's experience potentially if they're really interacting with Bitcoin directly. Uh, it's going to make smart contracts more efficient and it is going to increase some privacy aspects of it. So the overall user experience, while this is certainly a boon for developers working under the hood, uh, it's going to make their experience a little bit better. And it's just making this system, you know, not only more secure, but potentially more scalable, more efficient. And these are all things that are going to have to be built out as Bitcoin, as its own sort of transaction network works to compete with, you know, Swift or something like this or some of the traditional financial models. So I think that's maybe the top level takeaway.